Okay, here we have a frictionless pulley the shape of a uniform solid disc, uh, mass 2.5 kilograms radius of 20 centimeters. So 1.5 kilogram stone is attached to a very light wire that's wrapped around the ring, and it's released from rest. So this would be your initial picture, all right, and this here would be your final picture. Okay, the object, the stone, is now moving down at speed V. All right, and if we're looking for this, they're asking how far must the stone fall so that the pulley has 4.5 joules of kinetic energy. All right, so kind of st taking a step back here and looking at this, they're talking about energy. Um, they're asking how much the stone fell, so that would be referring to a change in potential energy. And um, the stone is at, so the stone, or excuse me, the pulley the uniform disk is actually rotating, so we we'll talk about rotational kinetic energy. All right, so our system here, we're going to decide on, given all that information, is going to be the stone and the pulley. Okay, I'll just put disk or pulley. Okay, that being said, we are going to have at the start UGI plus KI plus Ki rotational plus work done is equal to UGF plus Kf plus Kf rotational. All right, looking at this, if I use the bottom here, as gravitational potential energy is equal to zero, all right, I will have a bar of gravitational potential energy. I will not have either of these because the object is at rest. There will be no work because these two are within my system. Um, gravitational potential final will equal zero since I'm calling the bottom here. Okay, UG zero is the final position of the stone. The stone itself will be moving, so it will have some kinetic energy, and the cylinder is spinning, so it will also have some kinetic energy. Okay, so our equation we're going to use with is UGI is equal to kinetic energy final plus kinetic energy final rotational. All right, so in the problem, how far does the stone fall so that the pulley has 4.5 joules of kinetic energy. Well, looking at this, we know that the pulley will then have rotational kinetic energy of 4.5 joules. So we add this to our 1 half mv squared, <clears throat> and this will equal mg times y. Now, given this, we don't, we're looking for the height. We don't know what the final velocity is squared, but we do know that the cylinder itself has rotational kinetic energy. So we can say that the rotational can, so now basically if we know what omega is and the string is wrapped around, okay, we can relate omega to the, the angular or the linear speed of the outside of the cylinder and that will be the same ang, uh, linear speed as the stone itself. All right, since this has an angular speed, since the string is ripped or wrapped around the outside, we can then use the radius to find the linear speed of the stone itself. So we can write out 4.5 joules of kinetic energy will equal I omega squared. Now with this idea and this idea, all right, we can come up with how fast the speed of the outside of the cylinder is actually moving. So 4.5 joules of kinetic energy will equal one half. Now the moment of inertia of a solid cylinder would be one half m r squared. Now I can rearrange this to be omega is equal to v divided by r and substitute in v over r times that whole quantity squared. Now if we look at this, this will simplify to one fourth m v squared will equal 4.5 joules of kinetic energy. Now we can solve for V here, substitute it into our conservation of energy equation, and then solve for Y. 
Okay, so this here represents the rotational kinetic energy of the the disc, the pulley over here. So we're going to have four, 4 4.5 joules is equal to one fourth times 2.5 kilograms times v squared. If I solve for v, I find out that v is 2.68 meters per second. That being said, knowing that v is 2.68 meters per second, I can then substitute this in here and solve for the height. So I have mg times y is equal to 1 half times, now you got to be careful because the mass of the object that is falling, the thing that actually has linear kinetic energy, is 1.5 kilograms. So this stone is falling, the mass of the stone has 1.5 kilograms, which means it has linear kinetic energy. So we know that the outside moves at the same speed, the outside of this barrel moves at the same speed as the, um, the rope itself, so that would be 2.68 meters per second squared plus the 4.5 joules. All right, we do the calculations. We find that this is roughly 9.9 .9 joules is equal to mgy. If we solve for y, we find out that y is 0 0.66 meters. Okay, if you use 9.8, you should get 0 0.67, and this would be your answer for that problem. Now, going back, kind of stepping back for a second, kind of recap, you guys have this bar chart, you're in good shape. You just have to recognize the fact that the rotational kinetic energy of the cylinder, okay, you can use that to find the linear speed of the stone. And that's what's going to be useful in solving the rest of the problem.